the blessed man. The blessed man. Let's read Genesis chapter 1. Verse 28 is where we find the first time that God blesses a man. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. My Bible says, and God blessed them. Who is he blessing? Let's go to verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our own image, in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God has a plan. He has an intention. A plan to create a man that looks like him. And so God has all the materials to create this man. So he gathers all the materials, all the elements. And then verse 7, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So, they are created in the likeness of God, in the image of God, to function like God, to work like God, to do things like God, to behave like God, to think like God. All those things I'm talking about, you have them. You can operate like God. You can function like God. You, you can do things like God. You can act like God. <coughs> Excuse me. You can think like God. We were created to do those things. Or rather to operate like that. And then, why is God creating us like him to think like, the, like him, to behave like him, to operate like him? For this one purpose, he says there, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have what? Dominion. Let's, let them rule. So I want them to rule like I do. I want, them, I want them to have dominion here on earth. Just like I have dominion in heaven and in the, over the universe. I want them to represent me. So we are in this world to represent God. In whatever sphere of life you find yourself. You are there, you've, put, you've been put there by God so that you can represent him, so that you can be like him in that sphere, in that environment, in that area, and in that territory. So we are like God. And then we are here on earth to be like God. Are you listening? 
to do things like God, to function like God, to have dominion like God. So you are not a simple person. Amen. Let your neighbor know that you are not a simple person. So if you go to verse 28, there is something that has to happen for this man to be able to operate like God. You can be so much equipped, but be unable to manifest. You remember that scripture that says the creation and the world is waiting for what? The manifestation of the children of the sons of God in Romans chapter is it 28 verse 19. The world and the creation is waiting. So at this time in verse 27, the world is still waiting. The man has been created. A son of God has been created and has been released, launched into this world. But nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Because there was something that was supposed to happen prior to man being able to represent God, man being able to function like God, man being able to do things like God. This has to happen. Verse 28, what does it say? Hmm. And God blessed them. And God did what? And God blessed them. And God said unto them, before God blessed them, he could not say to them. So anything that God says to you, it is because he has already blessed you with it. If God says, I want you to serve me, it is because he has already blessed you with the ability to serve him. If God says, I want you uh, to give something it is because he has already given to you the thing he's telling you to give out so God never tells us to do things before he bless us so that God is asking you for something it means you may not know nobody may have ever told you but the fact that you can feel it in your spirit the fact that you can feel the calling, the fact that you can feel like you, like God wants to use you in a certain way. People may not even tell you. Your pastor may have never told you. Your parents may never have told you. Nobody may have ever noticed what you carry. But the fact that you can sense, the fact that you can feel like God is asking you to do something to serve him, it means that he has already blessed you with that thing. Amen. So never fear. When God says go, you go. When God says come, you come. Hallelujah. When God says do, you do. Because the nature and the likeness of God is already in you. Now the moment he says let them the moment he says, what does he say? Verse 28. God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over uh, the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. By the time he says be, become, be, eh, be a man of God, be my servant, serve me, become. Before God says become, he has already made you. Amen. He has already made you. He has already blessed you. He has already blessed you. Lift up your, your hand and say, my father, my maker, tonight release that blessing over my life activate me tonight 
for what you want me to do. Say it again, my Father, my Maker. Tonight, as I pray in this service, activate me for my destiny, for my future, for what you intended me to do in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the blessed, the blessed man, the blessed man can be just somewhere seated and not doing many things and not doing a lot of things probably because he's not aware. I pray that you shall be aware of the areas where God has blessed you. My people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. I pray tonight that God will make it plain and clear to you the areas he has blessed you. The areas he has uh, empowered you. Amen. So before you ask who is a blessed man, I think it is important for us to ask what is a blessing. What is a blessing? Number one, a blessing is the gift of access to something you cannot give to yourself. The gift of access to something you cannot give to yourself. That nature of God in you, it's not something you can give to yourself. It's something that was given to you. And that nature or that life that you carry, it's what we call Zoe. Zoe meaning the life of God. So it's not even your life. It is another person's life given to you. That kind of privilege is what we call a blessing. It's a blessing for you to carry the nature of God in you. And everybody has that. Only that for some people it is not activated. For people probably who are not born again they are still dead to that nature. They have no access to that nature. They have it but they have no access to it. It is in them but they cannot access it because they are dead. They are dead spiritually. They are dead spiritually. So it's a blessing for you to have access to the nature of God. It's a blessing. Look at First Peter chapter uh, what? Chapter 1 verse 2. Is it first or second James? That's your favorite scripture. Where is it? Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. There are those scriptures you know that uh, this person loves to quote them. So every time I'm reading this scripture, I remember James. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jemo. Let's read it. Mm. Yes. Amen. According as his divine power, God has given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath blessed or has, uh, has called us to glory and virtue. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. 
So we are blessed. Sometimes we don't see it. We don't know it. But it is there. Chapter 1 verse 3 says. Let's go. Let's read together. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So there is something in us. There is something we carry. There is something in you that cannot be accessed by any other man. That cannot be accessed by worldly people and by people who are not in the kingdom. And that is the nature of God. Somebody say the nature of God. Oh glory to God. Say the nature of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 19. The one I was telling you. The one I quoted earlier. For the earnest expectation. The earnest expectation. Of the creature. Waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Verse 20 says, For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Mm -hmm. So there is something that we have that the world do not have. And the world is waiting for us to manifest. And I've told you before that God will not ask you to manifest something that he has not already given to you. You have it. It is in you. And one of those things that you have it or you have is the nature of God. So a blessing is the gift of access to something you cannot give to yourself. So my prayer and the reason we are here talking about this so that we can have that access access to the supernatural access to that to that power in us access to that thing that we cannot give to ourselves it was given to us that thing was given to us if you call it a thing so that it can enable us to become like God so that with it we can be able to dominate with it, we can be able to rule. With it, we can be able to take territories. So a blessed man is the man that is able to access it. A blessed man is the one that has already gotten the access. The one that has already gotten the access. May you get access in Jesus name. I pray may you get access in the name of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Imagine you carry it, you carry the life of God. So if you are able to manifest that you are like God, that you carry the life of God, the, 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 the likeness and the nature of God, then you are so blessed. Then you are so blessed. And the world out there is not waiting for your wisdom. The world out there is waiting for you to manifest that thing. <laughs> that divine nature. That is already given to us. Matthew. He didn't say that he will give us. He said that according to his divine power. According to his divine power. Had given to us. So he has already given it to us. So you carry it. Somebody say I carry it. Oh somebody say I carry the power of God. So you should know that. When you know that you are blessed. Actually knowing that. That is a blessing. That is actually what we are calling blessed, uh, the blessing. That's what we are calling the blessing. Lift up your hand and say, My Father, my God, open my eyes and my spirit. Help me to discover the life of God, that nature of God in me, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. According as his divine power hath, hath, is a past tense. It's another word for us. Has given unto us all things. That pertain unto life and godliness. So everything concerning this life. Is already given to you. Everything that you will ever need in this life. 
is already given to you. Oh, somebody say I will have access. Somebody say I'm gaining access to everything given to me by God in Jesus name. So number 1, a blessing is the gift of access. Access to something you cannot give to yourself. Something like this. Salvation is a blessing because uh, you cannot give to yourself. Grace is um, a blessing because it's something you cannot allocate to yourself. You know, um, life is a blessing because it's not something you can you can give to yourself, isn't it? You cannot decide tomorrow I will be alive. You can only you can only believe and trust that tomorrow you're gonna be alive. But it will all depend on the blessing of God, the allocation of God. Amen. You don't know where you will be next year. You don't know how your destiny will be. All that is the uh, juris, dis, juris, dis, eh? Eh? Jury what? Jurisdiction of God, eh? Yes, yes. So that is the area of God. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Somebody say, I surrender fully to you. Say again, I surrender my destiny completely to you and to your will. Number two, what is a blessing? A blessing is an empowerment bestowed on a person to fulfill divine agenda or divine assignment or to fulfill his assignment. <clears throat> a blessing is an empowerment bestowed on a person to fulfill his assignment. So before God tells you to be fruitful, because that is your assignment. Before God says, uh, multiply, because that is your assignment. So your, our work here on earth is to be fruitful, to make sure that we become productive, productive to God, productive in life. And please don't change that to mean that you are created to be productive to yourself. You are not created to be productive to yourself and to your family. You are created for the reason of becoming productive to God, to this world. If you are doing something that will uh, benefit this world, then you are doing something to benefit God. Are you listening? And that is the difference. People that are going to be blessed are people who do something that will bless the world. Something that will benefit the world. People who struggle in life are people who do things that benefit themselves. So the difference between successful people and failures or mediocres or average people is in the area of fruitfulness. So the difference is whether or not you're productive. Productive not to yourself, but productive to the community around you, the society around you, the environment that you are in, your territory. So God created you to become fruitful. Go to school, not so that you can get a good job, and build a good house for yourself and for your mother. Go to school so that you can be equipped enough to bless humanity. If you do that, to benefit humanity, if you do that, you are blessed and you're going to go very far. Are you listening to me? 
So he gave them the empowerment. It is hidden in them. But for that to happen, God had to bless them. He said, and God blessed them. And he said to them, be fruitful. Multiply. What else? Replenish. Is it replenish? Yes, replenish the earth. And then do what? Subdue it. And then do it? Do what? Have dominion. Yes. Yes. Do something in this life that will bring people to God. Do something that will cause people to love God. There you are subduing this world. You can sing a song that will bring people to their knees. You can produce a sermon or a book that when people read, they want to go back to God. Hallelujah. So use your abilities, the uniqueness that you have, the likeness of God that you carry, the nature of God that you carry to do something like that. So a blessing is the empowerment, the empowerment, the enablement, the empowerment, the enablement to fulfill that assignment. The empowerment. So whenever you are praying, don't pray that God will bless you in the context of gaining things and having things. Ask God to bless you so that you can be able to release whatever he has hidden in you. So that you can be able to release that ability to subdue the world. So that he can release that song in you, in your spirit. It is already in there. It's not something that God is going to, to create. It is already in there. You were created in his image and in his likeness. But now, the blessing comes to activate it. The blessing comes to bring it out and demonstrate it. Manifest it to your world. And to your uh, environment. Amen. <coughs> May that begin to happen for you in Jesus name. Yeah. Hallelujah. So become fruitful. Become productive. And for that to happen. You need a blessing. And if you do that. Then you are blessed. Amen. May the Lord activate somebody here in Jesus name. I say may the Lord activate somebody here in Jesus name. Number three, a blessing is the privilege to relate with someone beyond your reach. And we can read Psalms 64. 65 rather, verse 4. A blessing is a privilege to relate with someone beyond our reach. Beyond our reach. God is someone who is beyond our reach. God is not in our level, isn't it? Do we agree that God is not someone who is in our level? Yeah. God is beyond our level. When we go to God, we must humble, isn't it? When we go to God, it's a privilege. It's a privilege even to know him. It's a privilege even to meet him. He's beyond our, our reach. So to know him, it's a big blessing. For example, if you got an opportunity to know the governor of this city will that not be a privilege will that not be a big blessing if you got a privilege of meeting the president of this nation I believe something in your life will change I believe even what God created in you will come out will come to life 
I know that. Because he might be used by God to activate you. He might be used by God to place you in a position where whatever was created in you by God will be able to, to work effectively. Isn't it? He might give you a platform. A platform that will help you be able to do what God created you to do. So that gift, that privilege of knowing someone that is beyond your reach, that is a blessing. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to know Jesus. It's a blessing to know God. And it is because when Jesus comes into our lives, there is something that he does in us. There is something that he does in us. He gives us the platform I'm talking about. Jesus can give you a better platform than uh, where Ruto can place you. Jesus will give you a better platform than Job Biden. You know that? Jesus will give you a better platform than all the monies in this world. So to know Jesus is a big privilege. Look at what the Bible says. Blessed. Let's read together. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach me or to approach unto, unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house even of thy holy temple. Amen. When you meet God when you have God, you have everything. When you meet God, it's a privilege to know God, to have a relationship with God. You know, some ladies would kill to be in a relationship with some men. Because for them, it's a big privilege. Some men would kill for them to be employed in a certain, in a certain office so that they can have that platform. So that they can have a relationship with some level of management. Some level of, you know, of people. It's a blessing to have, to have Jesus. It's a, big, it's a bigger blessing to have Jesus. Oh, glory to God. When you have Jesus, all those doors can open for you. As a matter of fact, even doors may not open for you. But to have Jesus, other, other people may want to kill to have a relationship with you after you have Jesus. When you have Jesus and Jesus does something in you, activates what you carry, gives you the light, shows you the light. Hmm? People will be killing to, to be near you. People will kill to have a relationship with you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It is a blessing to have Jesus. And there is no greater blessing than having and than knowing and having a relationship with God. Amen. The last one, number four, a blessing is doing something that will benefit someone else. A blessing is something is doing something, being able to do something that will benefit somebody else. Doing something that can benefit somebody else. So God did something in us, something to benefit us. In turn, we do something that will benefit somebody else. Go to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Genesis 12, verse 1 and 2. Are you getting blessed? Are you getting something? Glory to God. Let's read together. I want to go. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Amen. There is something that God will do for Abraham. 
mm, that will become a blessing. And there is something that Abraham will do to others that will become a blessing. So a blessing is doing something that can benefit somebody else. Very quickly as we conclude, three levels of blessings. Three levels of blessing. Number one, Number one level is God to man. God to man. Three levels. You can also say three dimensions of blessing. There is the dimension of God blessing man. God blessing man. Just like we have seen in Genesis 12 verse 2. And many times God is the one blessing man. Many times. You can never over bless God. You can never over bless God. God will always bless you more. God will always bless you more. Even when you give a lot and give and give and give. God will still continue to give you more. Amen. You remember Luke chapter 6 verse 38. It says what? Give and it shall be given back to you. It shall be given to you the same measure. So whatever amount you give to God. God will make sure that he uses the same measure to give it to you. To give it back to you. But now he will not give it to you back the same, uh, just the same measure. He will also make sure that he press it down. Shake it over. And then make sure it is running over when he's giving it to you. So you can never outgive God. You can never bless God too much. God will always overtake your blessing. God will always overtake you in terms of blessing. Amen. Mm. That's why we should never be stingy when we are giving to God. Because everything you give to God, if I give God one Bible, he will return to me the same kind of Bible, but pressed down, shaken together and running over. Amen. When I give God this church, he will return to me the same church, pressed down, shaken together and running over. When you give ideas to God, they will return to you. When they are pressed down, shaken together and running over. Praise the Lord. When you give yourself, your body to God, your strength, your blood, your sweat and everything, God will give himself to you. Amen. When you give your, your when you give your, what? When you give your, uh, your body, God will make sure now he give himself. You commit yourself to him, he will commit himself to you. Hallelujah. What a blessing. What a blessing to serve this God. So commit yourself to God. Bring yourself to God and give yourself to God. In turn, God will do this. He will give himself to you. And he will give himself to you pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Hallelujah. So you will have abundance of God in your life. How many of you are going to give yourself to God? Will you, will you give yourself to God? So give your Fridays to God. And you will see how God will give you days. <laughs> he will give you hours. He will give you a lot of time. Amen. Do you want to have time from God? I mean do you want God to come into your life? And show himself in your life? Then give yourself to him. Give yourself to him and you will see. Give yourself to him and you will see. This creature is very important. Very important. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. Running over. Amen. May God begin to answer your prayers. May God begin to answer. May God begin to give you back everything you have given to him. And even without praying that kind of prayer, it's a principle. When you do it for God, then God will do it for you. It's a principle. Even before you pray, it is still happening. And it will continue to happen. Amen. And if there is any devil that is stopping God or stopping the blessings of God from reaching you, we clear the way for you in Jesus' name. Tonight we clear the way. If you have been giving and you have not been receiving back, we clear the way for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. There are times when the devil can maybe stand on the way and make sure that your blessing is not reaching you. But by the power of the anointing that I carry tonight, 
I declare that all limitations are broken in the mighty name of Jesus. I say all hindrances are broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to receive your miracles. Begin to receive your blessings. Begin to receive what God is releasing into your life. In Jesus mighty name. Bwana sifiwe. Wow. Wow. Somebody say I will be expecting something from God. Yeah. 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 I don't want to go deeper on that. So number two, I'll just mention three and then we go. Number two, uh, man to man. That's another dimension. Hebrews 7, 7. Man to man. Man can do something that will benefit another man. Just like Abraham was blessed to become a blessing. Amen. If you want the flow of blessing to continue, make sure that you understand this level. And make sure that you are you are you are doing it. Make sure that you are you are applying it. Amen. It is very important. Look at what the Bible says. Give us from uh, uh, amplified, amplified, amplified. Let's read together. Want to go? Yet it is beyond all contradiction that it is the lesser person who is blessed by the greater one. Amen. Every time you realize that there is a man who is above you, you make sure that you get a blessing from them. You make sure you do what? You get a blessing. Uh, because you cannot be blessed from, uh, from below. The blessing has to come from above. The blessing has to come from... So you notice there is somebody that is more graced by God than you. That is the man that carries your blessing. A man that is more blessed than you. That is the man that carries your blessing. So that is where you go to get your blessing from. Amen. Today I will not teach you how to get the blessing, but I know you, you know how to tap a blessing from another man. So according to God, there is that level of God blessing you and there is now another dimension of man blessing you. Um, Joshua was blessed by who? By Moses. Amen. Elisha was blessed by who? Do you know that Elisha operated just like Elijah? The same anointing that Elijah carried was the same anointing that Elisha carried and he was blessed by God or by Elijah? He was blessed by Elijah. So even man can do what? Can release the blessing. Man, if a man is blessed by God, just like Abraham, God told Abraham, I am blessing you that you become a, a blessing. Yes. So there are men who are so much blessed by God, they become a blessing to us. You find such a man, you go and get your blessing from them. Amen. Many people who are doing great work in the ministry today, in the music industry, um, in business, they received something from a man. They received a mantle from a man. Our president received it from our former president and even from uh, Moy, isn't it? President Moy, isn't it? Yeah, you can see. Anybody that was cast by Moy is nowhere in the government. That's why today we have Mandamano. Any, okay, sorry. Any, <laughs> sorry to people who are uh, demonstrating today. Uh, but the truth is, anybody that w did not receive the blessing from President Moy today, they are struggling politically. Is that not true? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So you notice somebody is blessed, you go and get your blessing from them. You do everything to make sure that you get the blessing from them. Amen. The apostles were blessed by who? By Jesus. Timothy was blessed by who? By Paul. Amen. So there has to be somebody above you who is releasing the blessing over your life. Praise God. I say praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. So there is God to man. There is man to man. And there is also man to God. There are times when God, there, is a, there are times when man blesses God. There are times when man 
blesses God. You remember David saying, Oh my soul, bless the Lord. Amen. <laughs> you remember that? That is Psalms 103, verse 1. Oh my soul, bless the Lord. Yes. You remember Saul, not Saul, Solomon, when he went to the temple and sacrificed a thousand bulls to God because he loved God. Amen. When you love somebody, you do something that can benefit them. Amen. And blessing is a Hebrew word called Barak. Blessing is a Hebrew word called Barak. And Barak simply means to do something that can benefit another. To do something. Doing something. Doing something that will benefit, benefit God. Doing something that will benefit God. That is Barak. That is the blessing. So that's why we say that we come to bless the Lord. Oh Jesus I bless you. When you say Jesus I bless you. You are saying that I. I ascribe. All worship and all praise to you. That is what you are simply saying. Yes. I give you praise. So praise is one of the ways. To bless God. When you give praise. To God. You remember a blessing is something. Access to something you cannot give to yourself. God cannot give to himself. A praise. God cannot praise himself. So when you praise him, you are blessing him. When you praise him, you are doing what? Yes. When you kneel down and you worship him, you bow to him, you are blessing God. You are blessing God. You are blessing God. Amen. How many feels like they want to bless God here? You feel like God has been good to you and you want to do something to bless him? So sometimes when we are told to bless God, we only think of financial and material things. But beyond material and financial things, uh, or rather financial and material things, you can bow yourself and give a praise to God. And that is a sacrifice beyond material things. Amen. Obedience is something else you can give to God as a blessing. Obedience. Doing things for God. Uh, adhering to God, doing what God tells you to do. Hallelujah.